Wait a minute, we're not recording. We're on. We're live, but we're not recording. <laughs> this meeting is being recording. <laughs> Dead gummit. It's Monday. We are the Spiritual Neighborhood. The Spiritual Neighborhood is a grassroots community project of the Council of Families for Children, a 501c3 nonprofit. We believe that sick can be fixed, so we support services that improve the quality of life for the body, mind, and spirit for the integration of a healthy, happy human. And after bugging her for months, <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, we have with us today Carrie Glaze. What? 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 I said, I'm not kidding. No, literally I'm not. Literally for months. I'm not. Literally for months. Carrie Glazer is a psychic medium. She's on uh, Block Talk Radio with Elizabeth Harbin. They're on, you're twice a week now, right? Twice a month. Twice a month. Sorry. Twice, twice a month. A month. Taking yeah. calls, answering questions. Um, I don't know how long Elizabeth has known Carrie. I met Carrie about eight years ago at a women's retreat. She immediately gave me a nickname. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Meatly gave me a nickname. I've never had one. She's the only one allowed to use it. Um, and I found her to be one of the few people that impacted me profoundly because she said something to me that caught me totally off guard. And she turned to me during her gallery. And I was one of those people in the closet with my gifts and had been all my life. And she goes, you know, you can do what I'm doing and you could probably do it even better. And the fact that she said it like that was like, wow, time to wake up, Deborah, time to come out of the closet. And well, it, it was very, it was very in your face. Cause I remember it was, I remember that very clearly, because even though you say you weren't challenging me, it was an energy that you had in that moment. <laughs> and I remember thinking, oh my goodness, this woman is just put a challenge out on me and all right, here we go. And my team just said, here, lay this on out there. And you just kind of looked at you. You had starry eyes, but you kept talking. You kept doing the Gabby talk. <laughs> <laughs> and later on, no, because Gabby is the name that I gave you because I was just like, you know, I'm just going to call you Gabby because you've not stopped talking since I sat down. And so later on, though, we did find that that is an ascension of Archangel Gabriel, did we not? I honestly don't remember. I have to be honest with you. I, okay. I, I remember I the I, feeling, I but I don't remember yeah. the facts. Does that make sense? Okay. It makes, oh. yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yes. But uh, yeah, so ever since then, you've been Gabby. And Deborah, to me, when I call you Deborah, it does not feel right. It does not sound right. You're Gabby. She's the only one that gets away with calling me that, though. Just know. <laughs> is that a challenge? No. <laughs> it, it's a warning. I got a lot of nicknames, but I'm not going to use them, okay? <laughs> okay, so you guys are frozen, which is very... Odd for me because you're all frozen with like these weird faces on. Or right, did you freeze up? Uh, you guys did. No, you're well, fine. That happens. Yeah, we're old. <laughs> we're creaking through life. <laughs> well, it was because all three of you all at one time went. <laughs> you know, like that at least. Well, that happens daily. I mean, it doesn't anything. That you just think the screen's frozen. That's just really us. You're fine, though. We can hear you, and you're not lagging. So go for it. Awesome. You're not frozen. Okay. Let it go. Let it go. That's really like no, Miss Abby. <laughs> well, let's say how long have I known? How long have I known Carrie? I I don't know. I don't know how long I've known her. I haven't really known, I've known of Carrie for quite some time. We were you know, at the pub for many years, the side oh, yeah. night at the pub. But the thing is, is you would come in and it'd be like Elizabeth's booked. So it'd be like, hey, Elizabeth, how you doing? Every now and then it would be, you know, happy birthday, <laughs> you know? But yeah, literally. She would come in and she'd get, because she was like two tables behind me. It was her and then Miss Sharon and then me. And so we yeah. were right in a row there. But we get so busy at some times that it was like, you know, we know everybody's here. But it was basically just a coming and going thing because, you know, Elizabeth would sit down and it's like Elizabeth was gone from the time she got there to the time she leaves. You know, there's no, there was no ending. 
You know, the count well, of the theory was the I'm sure it was the same way, though. I mean, and it depends on which one of us got there first. A lot of times if she got there early and people knew she was going to be there early, they'd go ahead and get there early, trying to get ahead of everybody. <laughs> they're trying to get ahead of everybody is what they're trying to do. But we would, we would actually see the wait staff go over there to Carrie and talk to her and, you know, ask some questions and stuff at the pub. And we went through three different names with just the pub. It was, you know, Churchill's at one point in time. Then it was, what, the Celt? The Celt, and I don't remember the other one. There was a third? I, I don't I remember a third. Little... I don't remember. But, see, but anyway, you know, uh-huh. It wasn't, it actually wasn't the Celt. We actually moved from the Celt. That's right. We went to, that's right. We went to Eclair. Mm -hmm. That place is so Oh man, I love that place. Oh man, I love that place. That was my favorite place. But the Celt was a profound location because this is really interesting to me. That's where, you know, I uh, formed up a, a, a deeper connection with Carrie. That's where I learned about you. I met Sharon there, and then Sharon and I were partners at the Council of Families, and yeah. I met Sonny there. No, actually, Sonny got me involved with that, but it also firmed up our relationship even deeper, and then the waiter that was there that took care of me the time that I worked there for a couple of years was named Dallas, who was my son's best friend in high school. So there was oh, a lot yeah. of layers yeah. going on for me. Personally. Dallas was my favorite. I sat next. I sat at the very back. I didn't want anyone behind me. So I was literally at the yeah. very back at the couch. I remember that. And I would see Dallas all the time. And Dallas was my favorite. And we we would have endless discussions at night. He always made sure I had something to drink. I mean, he was just, I just loved that kid. I just loved him. And when he died, I just felt like a part of my family had died. I mean, it just, it touched me so deeply because he was just the best. He was just the best. And I'm so sorry he had, you know, problems and issues, but great space. Great. What I, what I was going to say, though, was when I first got involved with working at the Celt, Carrie intimidated me because I just thought she was... Yeah. I just, well, I didn't think. I just knew she was very powerful. She was very powerful. She had a lot of skills, had a lot of knowledge, and I was very intimidated. So that's really the reason I sat in the very back because she scared me so bad. Just let me get to the back. I really don't believe that. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I don't think I believe that. She did. She really, she really intimidated me. What they did not know was vice versa for me because. There, I, I do have a big age gap in there. No, I've been doing this for a while, but then my thought was, no, I'm in there with Chuck Murphy. I'm in there oh, yeah. with Kim St. Andre. I'm in there with Elizabeth Harbin, Sharon Cody. So I, when I came in, I had this, okay, I'm the new kid on the block. So it really felt good for me to have that caliber of vibration and expertise welcome me so openly and so that that I really blossomed and she, at the Celt and I really got to know what I could do well and Tyler was there so there well when you walked in you know how how you would walk in and you would you know you'd have to sign up and of course then you've got Kim there but then you're having to walk by these major players you know all the way down you know there were like what four mm-hmm. different different uh, groups Gail was the first one up, you know, in the front, not always, but at, at, at times at the front. And then Carrie, then um, Sharon, then myself. I mean, it was just a row all the way down. And that is, those were power players just all the way down. But Carrie came into that room like, you know what, by God, I own this space. I own this place. Don't mess with me. And it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> She carries that attitude with her everywhere. Yeah, I was like, I'm not messing with you. (laughs) It it took me a long time to own being a psychic. You know, my uh, my sister-in-law, when she looked at my bio, she said 20 years. And I was like, yeah, I've actually been doing this for 20 plus years. I've had experiences. And she's like, I didn't really realize that because um, her and my brother have been married, I want to say 10 years. 
And she's like, I know that you had started then really getting into it. And I was like, but you don't realize sometimes for psychics, it takes us, it, it takes us a long time to come out and to really own who we are and say, you know what, this is who I am, take it or leave it. I am a psychic medium, uh, into it, whatever it is that you choose to call it, you know, there's a lot of society that doesn't accept who we are. So I took a lot of that in the beginning because, you know, I do have a Christian family and Christian background that take it very literally, if you will, and don't like what I do. And so I got those emails that told me I was going to Hades in a hand <laughs> basket. And it's, a, it's kind of a beat down. So you got to hide who you are for a while. And, you know, I woke up one day. It was shortly after my dad died. And I said, you know what, Dan, this is who I am. This is who I am. I love standing in front of that audience. These are my God-given gifts. You know, I, I do connect with God. I, I connect with all entities. I, I don't really have that one, but he is my go-to. And I'm okay with that. And I just, I'm like, this, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel good here when I work with my clients and I have those one-on-ones. I just know that when they leave me, they are leaving with a sense of, I can do this. Or a sense of, grandma's okay, dad's okay. Um, I work with a lot of uh, uh, suicidals. And that was a challenge for me at first. My very first suicidal was one of, and I called them my kids because I was a teacher for many years. And it was one of my kids. And he came through and I was like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Very detailed. Names are not my thing. <laughs> I get asked all the time, well, can you give me a name? And I'm like, but then I watch Elizabeth and I'm like, man, last night she hit it. It was like Bob. <laughs> His, Bob. Bob. Archangel Bob. Bob. His name. I'm like, okay. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Dr. Chud, for telling Archangel us in Bob. advance about you know, Archangel but, Bob. Um, <laughs> yes it is just so you know there's times where I'm in awe of other people and I'm, I'm just sitting there watching you know but for me it's details I I have this thing where you know we get jewelry all the time I don't know if you guys I know you're all psychic I get jewelry all the time but I don't want just a genuine oh yeah your grandma says that you wear her ring big deal you wear her ring Anybody can validate that. So I want I want the details. I want to know what color that ring is. I want to know, you know, does it have roses on the side of it? Does it have vines? You know, whatever. I want to know that detail. So that was really important to me. And, you know, it just, and I don't want to know any details. You know, somebody calls me. I don't want to know anything about you. Let's just set our appointment up and we'll go from there. And that's why doing the show was so much fun because we have <clears throat> no idea who these people are. Now, there's a couple that call us all the time. <laughs> and we do know them as soon as they speak. We know who they are. And we pretty much know what their question is. But <laughs> last night, this caller calls us frequently. Very gifted individual. He's from New York, but he's a very gifted individual. And he calls once a month for what we believe to be his like monthly tune-up. He's just checking in. Making sure everything is okay. <laughs> last night, last night, Carrie really, really surprised me because out of her mouth, she said to him, I'm telling you, stop playing so damn small. <laughs> and we're just, you know, <laughs> turned around looking at her like, where did that come from? And I think what happened was the look on her face was, oh my God, I just heard what I said. I said that out loud. And then she said it again. She repeated herself, which was fun. I enjoyed that. That was fun. But that's that's one of those situations where if she, and she won't let it go. If she's on to something and you're trying to take her in a different direction and she knows that's the direction that she needs to go, she will not waver because the client will try and take her, you know, down the rabbit hole and she'll just say, stop spinning, stop spinning. <laughs> okay, now we're spinning. Now we're spinning. We need to stop. And they'll shut up. I mean, they just shut up. Like, okay, yes, ma'am. <laughs> so there's the 
this uh, down, uh, this power uh, there. I think it's too like, okay. been there. You know, I've been in that spin where you just, what do I do next? What comes next? What comes next? And, you know, I had a very good friend just tell me, just shut up and <laughs> go through your gratitude. That's what focuses you. I'm grateful I have a roof over my head. I'm grateful I have food on my table, whatever it is. Keep yourself focused and stop that spinning. And this poor lady, is, bless her heart, she just kept talking and talking and talking and talking. And we go to tell her something. And that's, that's what happens a lot of times. Sometimes they get on the phone with us or, you know, or we're doing a read and, and they get nervous. Like I'm talking excessively right now and I'm using my hands a lot. Because I'm a little nervous. I know you three, but there's a world out there beyond you three that could be watching me. So we start chat, 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 and that's what she was doing. And then, you know, she had someone also that was listening to her. So it just started that painting feeling, and all of a sudden, I just got this, whoa, stop. <laughs> so it was, you know, you're spinning. And then, you know, sometimes that happens to me. And sometimes I feel like it can be offensive, but if it doesn't come across, like with, with the young man last night, if I didn't say to him, Stop playing so damn small. Get your shit together, dude, and let's do this. <coughs> and you know what? He agreed with her, too. Well, what that was argue the key. with? I mean, it's hard he to argue agreed. the truth. And that's the thing about Carrie that's so <clears throat> wonderful is that there's no doubting her sincerity, and she's very transparent. And the other thing that's really good about Carrie, and you see it all the time because you work with her monthly, is that she is able to share the floor energetically and physically with other gifted people. It's not an ego trip. It's not, um, you know, one up -ups. And then the cherry on the cake with what she does is that she takes the information she has and she gives them practical advice on how to apply it to their daily lives. Because I don't care how good the advice is if the person can't filter it through. To have, what does this look like? How do I make this work in my life? What's the good of it? You know. So she, it's very down to earth to be to be so metaphysical. It's very down to earth. <laughs> well, one of the reasons that I know the show works so well is because it was one of those times where I heard. I'm thinking of you know the radio program. I'm thinking of doing something and <clears throat> what. What do I need to do? Where do I need to go? How do I need to do it? And I just heard it as clear as day. Call Carrie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard it as if it were Sharon saying to me, you need to call Carrie. That's how loud it was. And so when I did, and then Carrie said, well, yeah, let's talk about it. We, we had a really good discussion. And I think the advantage was that we started this and we didn't see each other. And I think that really helped us a lot because we had to learn our timing with each other. We had to learn there is a five to seven second delay. So we had to learn to speak and then stop and then speak and then stop so that the other person could do their thing. When we started seeing each other in the same studio, that was a totally different kind of situation because when Carrie's on a roll and she's really into that moment and she's talking about all kinds of stuff, you just sit and listen. You don't, you don't interrupt her. You let her go with what it is that she needs to say. And then she gets to that point where when she looks at you, it's like, okay, I'm done now without having to say, okay, I'm done now. You know, it's that, okay, I think we're, I think we're good enough to where we can go on to the next, whatever. That works and well. And being there, you know, being there, I'd never been there in person. So being there, it was like them having a, com a comfortable conversation. And that's how it felt. So last night, Luann yeah. was in the studio with Elizabeth and Carrie, and she got to watch them in action. So that's what she's talking about there. Yeah. And, you know, that's the whole thing. I can sit down and talk to a room full of a thousand people by myself, but I like having two, three, and four people to work with. To me, because it is about the conversational flow, you know, that, as opposed to making a speech. So, well, it, you know, it's an interesting situation. Carrie and I are very protective of our energy. I mean, we are extremely protective of our energy. 
So when she comes over, I want her to feel that she can open up, it's safe, it's okay, there's nothing to, to worry about or deal with. And so Luann doesn't even know this. I got in touch with Carrie and I said, okay, now here's what's going to be happening. I would like to, what do you think? Are you okay with this? I'm going to invite Luann to come over. She wants to watch and see, is that okay? And Carrie said, well, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm okay with that. No problem. Because I respect her energy. She is, you know, this is our show. And you want it to be the best show possible. So you're bringing an outside source in. You want to make sure that it's okay. But Carrie and I, you know, it, it was really funny because Luann was very quiet, which is very unusual. I mean, she's being respectful. I mean, you know. But when Luann has a point, she just, you know, she can't help it. She just kind of blurts You go, girl. You go. <laughs> well, that, that's just a night. It happened. It happened. And, and that's an homage to how comfortable, you know, you are with each other. And, and and how safe the space is. Well, because yeah. I, it's got to be a safe place. Place. And then you have the other side of the coin, which is me, because Carrie set the standard in our relationship from day one of her telling me what to do and how to do it. So I do the yeah. same thing with her. Carrie, you will do this. Get over yourself. Just move on. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So we're both real bossy with each other, and yeah. we're comfortable yeah, with we're that. <laughs> But is someone else for it to do? But there's there's a respect in it, though, Gabby. There's a respect that you and I have yep. in that. Is someone else for it to walk up to us and say, "Hey, we need to do it this way," and be like, "Help to the no. Who are you to tell me what to do?" Exactly. It's, uh, it's that respect. And who invited you into that conversation? <laughs> I'm right. Yeah, we're not talking to you. Yeah. I would do what I call my Bernie Mac look. He has in his stand up routine. He goes, You know how they look at you like you're small? <laughs> <laughs> They'd get that look. <laughs> oh my God, that's good. I love that. That is good. That's classic. I've done a gallery with you as well, Gabby, and you know, I didn't know what to expect when I came in. No. <laughs> that I. went in such, because we allowed it, it went in such a different direction. It ended up being more of a healing gallery than it was of a reading and giving information. Because we literally were at one time, Gabby was at one end and I was at the other, and we were sending energy through to this particular woman that was in there. But it was because we just allowed it was coming through and said, okay, this is how it's supposed to go. Like with Elizabeth, we don't force anything. Um, I, I, Elizabeth makes it very comfortable when you come in. It's the second you come in that front door, you know, it's very comfortable. And of course, I'm always greeted by Miss Eleanor. So, you know, that right there is just the beginning of me coming in and feeling at home and welcome. And then our energy, because there's, there is no limit to how far we're pushing our energies out when we're together. Well, I've never experienced personally or witnessed a gallery like the one that you and I did together. Um, yeah. Frankly, I think there ought to be more like that. That was pretty, pretty fucking awesome. It really was. It, it was pretty fucking awesome. It was. I've done many galleries, but that is my favorite. Uh, the galleries are my absolutely favorite thing to do because I'm standing in front of people and I don't know who's going to come out of my mouth. What's going to come out of my mouth or what movement I'm going to make, but those I'm absolutely 100% comfortable with. And in that particular gallery, and like I said before, I think it was because we just let it go. Yeah, it was, no it was really cool just to, to kind of give you a brief idea. Carrie would come up with something or I would come up with something. And then before we could even get the last sentence out of our mouth, the other person would come and go, and then, and then there's this. And so it would just layer upon layer upon layer. And then we would turn and look at each other and go, now this is what you need to do. And at one time, literally, we both turned at the same time and we're shaking our finger at the person. Yeah, Elizabeth and I do that constantly. Every time we actually did the electric thing, where Elizabeth and I pointed at the same time and our fingers touched. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it actually yeah. we actually touched fingers, and that was not intentional. Yeah, 
Is that that's, that's back when Carrie became laser glazer and I became electric Elizabeth. We call that ET sex. ET sex. Oh no. <laughs> no. 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 Phone home, ET. No, no, no. <laughs> but that's right. It was really nice having the extra energy in there of Luann because Luann was just she was on her phone and listening, but she was doing other things and watching the screen. But every now and then, I could tell that Luann was just there and connected. Yeah. And she would, I guess, she would write something down on her phone and be like, "Here, show this." And it was, yeah, that's exactly the <laughs> interior decorator. She's an interior decorator. <laughs> so well, um, that, you know, sometimes as readers or as intuitives, we don't have all of the information, it takes another one to come in and say, okay, I can ride this energy. Because we all mm -hmm. ride the energy differently. And so, yeah. like last night, with the, one of the reasons that we had, Elizabeth was riding this one direction with Bob, and I'm going off in this direction, and all of a sudden, I was like, no blink or nothing, just take a U-turn, come back. And it was just, it was just that connection that we had. And that works. Well, and I and think that had a lot to do with Bob. <clears throat> well, and I think that's important. And we talked yeah. about that, that we allow, we allow spirit to kind of dictate the direction we're going to go into. Because sometimes, and, and like Carrie said, the whole basis of the situation as a teacher was this client's mom. I mean, there, there was no doubt about it. But the Archangel Bob was going, look, I paid for this. This is my show. I'm coming in on this, and we are going to be talking about what I want to talk about. And so you allowed Archangel Bob. But you know what happened last night? That was a first. I've never had this happen before. Bob, and we're going to call him Archangel Bob. Who the hell is Bob? First. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who the hell is Bob? Bob we did a uh, ghost talk. Ghost oh. talk with Chuck Murphy, Dr. Chuck. And we're talking about angels that come through. And he said, if you're always going to expect it to be the Archangel Michael or Gabriel or whatever, don't discount the Archangel like, say, Bob. Okay, <laughs> Archangel Bob is here. What if his name was just Bob? But what if he was the head of the group and you didn't know it was Archangel Bob? <laughs> He could get bad alias. Okay, today I am Archangel Bob. I remember okay. hearing that. Oh my God, how exciting <laughs> is that? So this, we're talking about it. So this guy shows up last night and we're, you know, we're asking there, there's a male presence here. There is a man who is, he's just not going to go away. And our client from the, the show said, well, his name's Bob. <laughs> of course, that was just hysterical. Oh my God, it's for real. It's the Archangel Bob. That's He's funny. He, he lives. Funny. He lives. But Bob was the first one that actually, during our um, different shows that we've had, who actually came and said, I miss my son. Mm. I miss my son. I miss my talk with him. I miss our trips. I miss our fun. I miss him. I miss my son. And it was very profound, and that has not happened to me before, where someone on the other side misses someone here so deeply that they will, they'll do whatever it is that they need to to get that source to let them know, son, I miss you. I miss you a lot. That's so shocking. So the, the it granddaughter, it's shocking. The granddaughter said, what can I do to help my dad? And Carrie said, talk to him. Talk to him about your grandfather. Mention the grandfather. Talk about Bob. What did you do, Dad? How did you do things? Where did y'all go? Get him involved so that that allows that individual to, to speak, which I thought was brilliant. I mean, I really did. I thought that was just brilliant. Carrie nailed it. She just nailed it. She looked at it from, well, what would I do? Well, I'd talk to my, I talked to him about my dad. Get him to talk. And that's, that's, that's what she did. It was just, it was an amazing night. It was a lot of fun. We had more people that we could not get to last night. I bet we had 40 to 50 people holding last night. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a really good show. People are hungry for information. They're hungry for comfort. 
But what you just experienced, I've, I've had a couple of times where I've experienced that. And the first time it was shocking to me to hear the emotion yeah. coming across. I had a gentleman appear to me at a friggin' Christmas party of all places where I'm doing party readings. Yeah. And this guy kept popping yeah. in wearing a wedding veil. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? You know? <laughs> And this is not that kind of party. That's what I told him. You know, that's down the street, dude. You know, but he says, no, there's a woman fixing to sit down. And when she sat down, she goes, she goes, I know you're not doing this, but do you talk to the dead? And I'm like, oh, sweet Jesus, here we go. And I said, well, I've got a guy here. And she goes, do you know his name? And I'm like, Carrie, I don't pick up on names. I don't pick up on living names, much less dead names. And I said, but he's wearing a wedding veil, and he's just hilarious. He won't shut up. And she goes, that's my brother. She immediately described him. And I said, yes, that's what he looks like, you know. And he's and he says, tell her that I'm sorry I fucked up the wedding and for her to quit grieving over me being gone because I want to play with her some more and we can have good times still. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? I'm like, you're not going to wow. haunt her, are you? But, you know, I'm talking out loud and she's going, no, no, keep going. And so we had this conversation and she had been talking to him, but she hadn't been listening because the grief was blocking her. Listening is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. I, I tease a lot because, you know, with my with my team, I talk to my angels, my guides, my team, just like I talk to one of you. OK, and so yeah, I hope you're nicer. I hope you're nicer to them. <laughs> I'm, not. I'm not. Joanne and her, Joanne and I, this time when she comes through and she says, girl, shut up and listen. <laughs> I like and her. <laughs> My guy is literally telling me, shut up and listen. And you'll get it because if I don't hear it that way, that's how I need to hear it. And that's how that young man last night needed to hear it because he needed mama to think his butt. <laughs> hey, listen to what we're telling you. Because your next step is right there, you know, it, it, it's right there. So, you know, when my guides tell me, sometimes I don't listen, and she's got to whack me with a two by four to get me to listen. But that it literally, that is what this is about. It is listening and being open to the flow. Well, I tell you what's really interesting, and I want to really kind of hammer this down a little bit more, is when you have two people... In, that are gifted, whatever you want to call it, working together, mm -hmm. how the messages can either reflect one another or they can continue one another. I see this a lot in my uh, in my prophetic ministry with Bible study, because what we do oh, is yeah. we, we, we all sit down and write down our, our, our ministry, our prophes prophetic ministry before we get started. We have our lesson. And I cannot tell you how many times that myself and one other person will tell the same person the same thing, but from a different visual. Because I'm very visual with my prophecies. I get a lot of metaphoric visuals. And so does this other person. And it's amazing. The other thing that's amazing is how my metaphors reflect the lesson that was that's being taught and I have no idea what the lesson's going to be so to me right. that's just a really firm confirmation whether it's for them or not for me that I'm on the right track I'm getting the right messages and I'm delivering them to the right people so it's just a reassurance for me because I don't know about you guys but I don't care how good you get at this or how confident there's still a lot of self-reflection involved and a lot of questioning you Big know time. I had that happen last night on the way home. We had we had a client that was trying to call in and she wasn't able to call in. So her husband called while I was in the car and, you know, said, can I go ahead and get my wife a reading? And I said, well, I'm actually in the car on my way home. And said, okay. And I said, but you know what? I looked at Stan because my, I don't drive. So Stan, you know, Stan drives. And I said, you know what? Do you mind pulling over? Because I need to do this right now. I've had that urge. I don't do that all the time. That's not something we do. I usually set up an appointment, but I felt very urged and nudged to do that. But I got to a point in in reading with her where I was like, okay, you know what? I'm not sure. I'm getting this energy. I'm understanding this energy. But the, the lady, when I was giving her the information, she was, that fits, but I'm not 100% sure that's what this is going on. 
So I said, listen, I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to Elizabeth because I know a lot of times, I think I said this earlier, is we don't have all the answers. It sometimes takes another medium or psychic to come in and say, this is what I'm taking it because they understand that energy differently than how I understand it. So there, there are times where Elizabeth is on something and then I can be over here picking up, you know, the grandmother because I understand that grandmother's energy. But Elizabeth never saw her until I brought her through. Right. Or like last night, I didn't see Bob until they took me on a U-turn. Because Elizabeth picked up that energy and she knew and he wrote that because he felt comfortable in her energy. So there's times, you know, we can have a whole entire stage psychics and mediums out there and we're all going to pick somebody else up differently or feel that energy right. differently and read differently well there's That's a reason for that though and i love what is yeah. said at our, our at our bible study before we start prophetic ministry is to help encourage enlighten and empower people we are not meant to know everything in all specific details mm -hmm. That is not our job because that eliminates people from the idea that they still have choice. And I love and, that. And you have free will. Free will and choice. Absolutely. You know, and I love that. But when you have two people say the same thing, there's power in that. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. Go ahead. Go ahead. When Carrie sent me that uh, message... What I found interesting, we were talking about picking up the same kind of information or not picking up the same kind of information. I had just kind of grabbed my phone and just was kind of scanning over like who had called and text messages. So I'm reading what Carrie's, you know, writing. I'm going, I have no idea. I get nothing. I'm getting absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's what I texted back to her. I'm getting absolutely nothing on this. I have no. There's something not, something's not being revealed here. I do not know what's going on. I mean, that's just about as you know honest as you can get. And we both got the same answer. We both came up with the same thing without discussing it, without going into detail of stuff. But that's just like when something like that happens, you go, well, I'm not getting anything. I'm almost like, oh, my God. Is it still working? I know. Am that's I the wrong? confirmation of somebody else is not getting it either. Oh my God! Yeah. My, it's my, the same my spiritual way watch is broke. You know, <laughs> Luann. For years, we were saying, Luann, whatever pops into that head of yours, just blurt it out. Oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> because she is that good. Well, in in some cases, it's a dangerous. You know, we're treading the fine line there. But when she's reading for people, the best thing for Luann is that it, it is one of those situations where you just blurt it out, and that's what happened to her last night. She had the answer. She knew this is what that needed, and she blurted it out because she just felt like, you know, I need to, I need to say that. And then and it I went, goes to this individual. Well, Luann, when you get in yeah, the zone, you're being, oh well, my God, Luann, when you're in the zone, don't you find it impossible not to blurt it out? I do. Yeah. I, it just comes out regardless. Well, well, that's why they were getting little notes last night, because, <laughs> because I was like being bombarded by information, and, and no. when it was being repeated three times, I'm like, okay, I got to say this. Mm -hmm. that's no. just repeat. If I hear something three times, spit it out, doesn't matter how crazy it is. And I'm not afraid that's to right. do anything crazy. And I've had the circus come to town. I've had, you know, I've had it all. It's, you know... Uh, it's almost one of those things, you know, with the, the dad with the t-shirts, but I have daughters, you can't spare me. I'm, I talk to dead people, you can't spare me. It's true. Because I've seen a lot, and I'm grateful of some of the things that I've seen, most of the things that I've seen. Some of it I prefer not to, but um, when I do see accidents and stuff, I have a limit and I have boundaries, but I know that my team is going to show me what I need to, because some, some of those parents, especially want to know but then i you know our job is to say okay how much can they actually handle like elizabeth was saying you know um what they're open to okay but we 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 do have this job of making sure that we get it and we spit it we get what we're getting stay within the ethics of it stay within the you know clarity but then also at the same time we do have to remember that that person across from us is going to take what we have to give to heart 
and run with it. So it is a big responsibility and it's it is huge. You know, something that I take very for me, I take it very, very seriously. And sometimes, you know, even you said to me, Boy, you're just getting too serious. Well, it's usually when I get real serious I'm in the zone. Yeah. Hi. And well, I've realized that more and more it's like, oh, oh, oh I'm getting really serious, yeah. Because I'm in the zone and I know right now that what I'm what is gonna come out of my mouth it's so important that I have to discern and be very connected to my team so that that person across from me understands. There's even times where I've spit something out and said, okay, let me explain now. Yeah, yeah, you have to and elaborate. Yeah. Across from us, you know, get, okay, this is what's going on. You know, I've, I've had a few things throughout. I've even had time where I've shut down completely to the like, now that was crossing my boundaries, and I'm not okay with that. You know, and so I've, I've had some things that I'm like, you know, okay, that's not okay. And that's okay to say, too, especially for yeah. those that are getting into this profession. It is okay to say no. Exactly. And your hours are from this time to this time. You know, don't be waking me up at 3 o'clock just to let me know that you can wake me up at 3 o'clock. I don't need that. Well, and the you other have to set your boundaries. The other thing is, and maybe Carrie doesn't agree with me, but I think she will, is that Carrie and I work in the entertainment field as well, doing readings. Now, we're not there to just entertain. We actually bring a value, but we have a very short period of time to do this. And I set the standard with the people at the parties. I don't do deaths. I don't do divorces. I don't do weddings. And I don't do births. And Because sometimes we only have three to five minutes to sit with this person. But at the same time, you know, we're... You, you get information and you're like, there's no way I can tell this person that because it's a party. It's absolutely a party. But then if you feel that you're out of integrity, that there's information to relay to them, you, you know, you're walking a fine line because if you are down or at the party, they're not going to hire you again. So, <laughs> there's a lot of ethics involved here. I, I have, for me, I have not gone, I don't work, I don't work a lot of the same parts that you guys do. I tend to work more of like the, the family ones or the, you know, but I, I, I don't set the, I set the whatever comes, comes, but we, we leave on a happy and funny note. Like, okay, this is a party. You know, know that grandma came through. She just wanted you to know that she's here. She's fine. Now let's party. So I know that if, especially in those situations, that if I'm at a party and someone's passed and I carry Kleenex with me all the time, um, the cards that I take with me are, are happy cards, they're unicorns. But one of the first parties I did for Catherine was a, a Halloween party. And it, oh, this was an amazing, Elizabeth, this is right up your alley too. It was an amazing Halloween party, but this woman said, my husband wants to hear from his father. And she was, I know this, I said, okay. So I said, know that I am a medium and that is one of the things I do, and I'm not going to hold back. So we're going to go as fun as we can on this. But that had one very important message that he wanted to bring through. Son cried. It was like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. And then it was like, okay, Dad, bring us back home. Bring us some happy news. So that, that's how I, I do that because I, I know for me, that's going to happen. I'm going to get the, the father that's going to come through and I'm going to get the tears. And the, but I've never had somebody leave my table that's been like, oh, this is a party. Fuck that. I didn't want this. I'm sorry. I didn't want that. No. I've never had that. <laughs> no, most people really are hungry for whatever we have to offer. And I have a rule. It's not a good party if I don't make free people cry. You know, but happy tears, not bad tears, you know. Tears. But we got to have those tears and it's a good party. Well, it is uh, almost one. And oh, my God. Are you serious? Yeah, I am serious. And uh, Carrie is going to be joining us a lot. She just pops in whenever the hell she wants to because she thinks she's in charge. Um, but um, Carrie, <laughs> 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 Carrie and Elizabeth and Luann and I are bringing Martha Decker back uh, with us next month starting someday. We haven't finalized that with a new show as well. And we'll be telling y'all more about that. It's called Unfinished Business, and we're going to be doing paranormal investigations. 
uh, and taking, a, and I am the professional skeptic of the group, so I'm going to be asking a lot of the hard questions. So, um, Carrie, in the meantime, tell people how to get a hold of you for your services because that's why you're here. The easiest way to reach me is 469-734-5259. Um, text message is great. I will answer that, you know, pretty quickly unless someone on the call or something. But um, uh, my email is Carrie Glazer, K-E-R-I. E L A S E R at gmail.com. And then, of course, I'm always on Facebook or you can reach me through the Spiritual Neighborhood. Right. She's on our Spiritual Neighborhood page on the bios, and you can always email us at spiritualneighborhood.com. No, that's not right. Spiritual Neighborhood at gmail.com. Uh, and we'll forward them to Carrie, and she will be here a lot more because we love her. <laughs> I love being with you ladies <laughs> Thank you So, Alright we're going to close Anybody else got anything to say real quick before we close Doesn't Elizabeth hair look marvelous Yes it does <laughs> You know when you have good hair You just can't wear a hat and cover it up You got to show it Isn't that adorable good. That is adorable I don't know why just but, awesome. I don't know why but I just saw you as a child Did you wear your hair short as a child um, until high school. I just saw you as well, a child. It was really short until high school, and then it started grow. I let it grow out really, really long. Well, you were adorable. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So, thank you for being with us. Help us support others. Both those. Oh, wait a minute. We also have a, a sponsor. I forgot. Jesse Averett at Averett. What the hell is that called? LLC. A V W O. R-X. Yeah, Avworks. That's right. Avworks. And his last name is Averett. He's at my house right now, so don't call him because I don't want him to get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> we had another but break. If you were to call him, what would that number be? <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's 214-906-3787. Yes. And he literally does the Dallas-Fort Worth area with the Handyman Projects. No job is too small. Or no problem is too big. And Joe Murphy Insurance is about ready to sponsor us, so we'll have another sponsor. So we are taking awesome. sponsors. You too can be a sponsor if you have something that you want to let people know about. And uh, yeah, I had another break in that stupid sprinkler system. So you know, it, that's just rude. It is rude. How dare they? It is. I mean, it's only fifty years old. Who? <laughs> It's still rude. I know. It's still rude. It is rude. And tonight, um, oh, hey, you and uh, Elizabeth and Carrie, y'all can join us tonight if you want to. I'm doing a demo uh, Zoom recording of what it looks like to do a Zoom room party with readings. Um, and I already have three people participating. But if y'all want to come join us, feel free. If you don't have anything else to do, it's seven. So, same well, as we're actually going to be on Zoom doing our class. What class? Every Monday night. What class are you till doing? Till the end of time. What class are you doing? Artist White class. I didn't get in the artist there. Artist White class. How come I didn't get in there? Because I went to my group and I just kind of threw it out and Carrie said, you've been kind of talking about this for about four or five years now. <laughs> Could you finally maybe just make that happen? I even bought and the I said, book. Well, if, I get, if I said, if I can get five people, then I'll do it. Man, all of a sudden it was like, whoosh. Um, okay. I'm so, gonna, I'm gonna, it's all Carrie's fault. I'm, I'm her. I'm gonna no. I'm gonna slap all four of your cheeks individually. I bought the book and everything. That's Carrie. Go ahead. <laughs> go after her. She started it. She's the one that did it. Oh, I'm just gonna do it by myself then. To hell with y'all. So <laughs> that's Carrie. Carrie did it. I had nothing. I say nothing. Well, I know nothing. Was in another class that we were finishing, and I said, Elizabeth, you need to do the artist play, and boom, 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 boom. It was booked before. I mean, it happened overnight. Overnight, it was like whoosh, and I didn't even get to advertise it to the public. Oh, boo hoo! It was just in that class. Boo hoo hoo! Okay. Here's what's coming up next, Miss Gabby. If you just stop for a second, I'm gonna do another one. <laughs> she is bossy. She is. Wow. She bosses me all the time like a big dog. It just, it, boy, I tell you what. I love it. Go for it. This is great. Well, let I'm me tell lie. you something about you that you don't know, Miss Gabby. <laughs> wow. I love it. Let me get some popcorn and watch this show. This is great. 
with your time and everything that you have going on, I, that's not happening for you right now. You would miss too many classes and be asked to not participate because you weren't there. Oh, look at her making decisions for me now. Oh, my God. No, I'm okay. not making decisions. For you, you're adding shows and doing things that you're supposed to be doing right now. Okay, so here's artistry, here's the difference. He, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here's the difference between me and her. She's reprimanding me in public. I'll wait till we get off here, and then I'll call her and chew her butt out. <laughs> but here's the caveat: when you get in this class, you only get five minutes to speak. Everything. Can you manage that? Yes. I used to do 12 hour surveillance and not speak to anybody. Screw all of y'all. I have sat for hours in the deep dark woods. Give it up. <laughs> Give it up. Hey, it happened. I no, talk when I want to, and when I don't want to, I don't. There you have it. <laughs> timer. Five. Oh, this is 30 minutes. Now, see, you made the timer go to 30. It was only supposed to be five. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So anyway, you can contact anyone from any of our shows by emailing spiritualneighborhood at gmail.com. And if you have for anything that makes people laugh, smile, sing, or feel better, you are a holistic healer and we would like to talk to you. We are here to teach that the body heals with play, the mind heals with laughter, and the spirit heals with joy. And with friends like this, who needs enemies? <laughs> 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 We're the whole right, thing. That's right. Okay, that's pretty much the show, isn't it? It is. So say, <laughs> say good night, Lucy. Bye, Lucy. Bye, Lucy. Bye, Lucy. <laughs> Bye, Lucy. <laughs>